Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Sarah Fenske. Kathy Helbig estimates that 70% of divorces come with real property needs. Sometimes a home needs to be sold. Other times, one partner needs to buy the other out. It's seldom as simple as agreeing to part. And Helbig knows all about this. She is the owner of Chesterfield's Experience Realty Partners. But it's not just that she's been in the real estate game for 25 years. She was also recently certified Missouri's first divorce real estate specialist. That meant 40 hours of training, helping people split up their property even as they split. And she joins us today. So, Kathy Helbig, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. So, Kathy, we've heard a lot about COVID babies, this idea that we're all stuck in close (laughs) quarters, and so people naturally, they're going to have to have more children. I'm wondering, though, after talking to some of my friends, are you anticipating COVID divorces? You know, actually, we we have been. We've heard from several local attorneys. There's actually uh, several articles, national articles. ABC News was one of them I was just reading that has been reporting an increase in inquiries about uh, divorce. Now, a lot of the courts have been closed or limited. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they haven't seen everything happen yet, but they're expecting that there will be an overwhelming number of filings. Now, on the flip side, where you just talked about babies, we, you know, there are some reports, too, that are saying that, you know, in some cases there, there might the whole COVID shift might have caused some people that were on the edge to try to work it out. You know, you have to, you're, you're stuck together. You've got your kids at home. So it's, it's, it's going to be one or the other. And, yeah. um, but, you know, but based on what a lot of the attorneys are saying that the phone calls and the inquiries are there. So it, it's looking like. You know, as long uh, there's there's definitely overwhelming um, financial tensions right now. You know, when you're forced at home together with someone that you haven't been getting along with, those are all the the things that are going to be the boiling points for certain people. So they they do expect it to be. Yeah. definitely increasing in the next few months. I mean, it, it does make a certain sense. Uh, so I wonder yeah. about the timing of this. Was this part of your motivation in getting this <laughs> certification as a specialist? No, I was just going to say I'm not opportunistic. It wasn't, it wasn't that, <laughs> although it would be pretty smart if I, if I would have been. But no, I've on, honestly, in 25 years in the business, I have dealt with so many divorcing families, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. You know, not every sale is a happy sale. And sometimes we get that call <clears throat> and, um, you know, we've got we've to gotta deal with certain situations that are not pleasant. And over time, I've realized that dealing with divorcing couples um, have, it requires certain nuances that just a regular real estate agent is really not trained in mm-hmm. and really has an experience. You know, a lot of a lot of experience comes from things that have happened, you know, or, or blow-ups or situations that you don't anticipate that you've had to work through. So over the years, you know, in divorcing situations, I've had that creep up. And unfortunately, it, it's there's like a disconnect between uh, real estate professionals and the family law uh, side of things, mm-hmm. you know, because there's different rules and, and requirements for lending and real estate than there is for just, you know, settlements when you're dealing with someone that's, you know, breaking up their, their home and their finances. <clears throat> so I've definitely dealt with, you know, situations that were almost impossible to carry through or court orders or settlement agreements that were either hard, impossible, or really emotional that, um, you know, the parties didn't anticipate when they went into those agreements. Hmm. So the family so that's lawyers, my passion. yeah, the, the family lawyers might work out what looks like a great agreement to them. And then it's the job of, of the real estate agents to make this all work on the ground. And, and what seems to make sense right. in a courtroom, that might not make sense when it comes to a property transfer. A hundred percent. And and even, you know, on the lending side of things, you know, so it, a big example I deal with a lot of times is, you, you know, you're negotiating who's going to keep the house or who's going to buy out the house. Where's the equity of the house coming from? And then in that process, that's part of a bigger picture. So you're dealing with, well, here's what I'll accept for, you know, my alimony. Here's what I'm going to accept for the liabilities and blah, 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 because I'm going to get the house, you know, those type of things. Well, what if you can't get the house? Mm. And this is, you know, you've already agreed to these other things because each settlement 
can be separate. It's not all part of one big settlement. And once something's been decided on and ruled on, then that settlement stands. And then the real estate oftentimes comes later in the process. Hmm. So, you know, and it's not like the family law, law attorneys are, you know, getting them into situations on purpose that they can't do. There's just a lack of collaboration between both, you know, both industries, because I think a lot of times real estate agents are, are thought upon as just salespeople. <clears throat> so that's why I, I knew that there really needs to be, you know, people that are a little bit more skilled and understand the legal basis of things, too, to really be able to serve the families the best. So this has just always been a passion for me, and I just tweaked the way I do my business over the years anyway. And then I knew that there was this leading divorce specialist. She's been working with divorcing families for over 15 years, Mm -hmm. and I met her years ago, and she really started this whole movement of collaborating between family law and real estate and put together this this certification, which is um, the Alumni Institute. And it's led by her and, um, you know, five or six uh, family law attorneys and, and a Supreme Court or Circuit Court judge as well. So it's a really intensive training. And usually, you know, it's in person. So you spend a week or a week and a half of your time with all of these attorneys and this, this real estate coach and judges and you learn you learn the legal system you learn the um how the court is set up you know you visit court cases you know that type of thing so they Mm -hmm. teach you the anatomy of divorce they teach you the landscape of divorce finance they teach you how to you know act in divorce court because oftentimes you're going in as a witness Hmm. or to give expert testimony um there's heightened ethics for certified divorce real estate experts that go along with you know the bar requirements attorneys have ethics as well and 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 tell me uh, kathy just for a moment those those heightened (laughs) ethics does that have to do with things like uh, potential conflicts of interest since these parties uh, might have adverse interests a hundred percent yes So a lot of times what happens is, you know, everybody knows a real estate agent. There's 14,000 real estate agents between the St. Charles Board of Realtors and St. Louis Board of Realtors. So, you know, everybody probably knows five real estate agents. And what happens is usually one of the parties wants to grab someone that they know or a friend or somebody that recommended them. And then, you know, there sometimes is a conflict of interest because there's a relationship there. It's hard for that person to be neutral. Hmm. And then oftentimes it causes the other party to have lack of trust. And when there's lack of trust, it heightens conflict. And then oftentimes they end up shooting themselves in the foot because they're going to get emotionally, you know, involved in this deal instead of thinking through all of all of the um, the outcome that they're trying to get to. They're more involved in is she making me, you know, is she wanting to list this house at this price because it's her friend and she's going to cut her a deal on commission and she's going to rebate her money back. Like all this stuff goes through people's heads during divorce and it just muddies up the real estate transaction so having a neutral trained party is so 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 important for divorcing couples because we're trying to just keep you on track there's no vested interest in either side the vested interest is getting you the goal that you want to achieve with your real estate transaction and without having some of that experience in the background a lot of real estate agents really aren't equipped to handle the emotions and the conflict that come up and selling a divorced property. So this, uh, as Kathy, as, this this training just sounds absolutely inva- invaluable. But as you say, the emotions can be such a big part of it. Um, people mm-hmm. can just be so irrational when, when they're divorced. There's just so much hurt that can go into that kind of decision. Right. Um, did the training also cover almost like the counseling type aspect of, of yes. what a real estate agent has to do in these cases? 100%. Part of it was communicating with power, which was led by one of the attorneys um, with a lot of reading. There's, you know, many books that were that were given to us to make sure we understand just simple things like you can't communicate with one one of the parties more than the other. The order of, of times that you communicated, if you went to if you've had one in-person meeting with this one, you do not have another meeting until you've talked to the other person like it's very, very well thought out so that we can avoid any, you know, misinterpretation of someone getting better service than the other or hearing more more than what the other one's hearing. And then it's communicating also uh, equally but separately. You know, I've, I've seen people in the past make mistakes of putting them both on an email, like, and then giving them updates for feedback or, you know, together, like communicating all of that together. And then all of a sudden something way down in the thread 
was a piece of information that someone told, you know, mm. the, the real estate agent that really was in confidence or really didn't want the other spouse to know. So there's little mistakes like that that can be made that you don't even think about until you're 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 sitting in front of these people going, don't do this, do this, you know, and just keep it super professional. And then high conflict, you know, that's another whole whole case. A lot of agents will fold when somebody is screaming at you, which happens you know, a lot yeah. <laughs> in these types of situations. I, I feel and like I think, if, if I were in your shoes, I might be trying to avoid cases involving divorcing couples rather than jumping in with both feet. I mean, what what made you decide, well, hey, you know what? Like, I'm going, to, that. I'm going to seek this out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did think about that because it is stressful. I'm going, I There's times when you get off the phone and you just think, oh, my gosh, like, I'm really trying to help you, but you're, you're just beating me up and it's, and it's hard. Mm-hmm. But that's more reasons why I want to do this because my 25 years in this business and being one of the highest selling real estate agents in St. Louis, I've got enough experience. I've got the respect level and I've got the reputation that I can go in there and peel that back, not Mm -hmm. not let that hit me as hard as it's going to hit somebody else that's not trained and equipped for that. And also just because no one else is going to fight that hard to keep this on track for them mm-hmm. as somebody that's passionate about this particularly sub, you know, specialty. Well, so. Kathy, you're, you're really taking on the Lord's work there. And um, I think it's great to hear about this specialty. It, it does sound like just such a valuable service for people who are in that boat. There is one last thing I wanted to ask you about before we let you go today. And that sure. is just the state of the real estate industry overall. Mm-hmm. Obviously, a lot of things went on pause um, because of the coronavirus. Coronavirus. And at the same time, I know that the few houses that have been on the market, they have just been getting snapped up because the inventory is just so low. Um, what do you see happening out there as these restrictions begin to ease up? Is this looking like it's going to be a good time to buy and or sell? Yes and yes. And what there's an asterisk on buying. So <laughs> what happened is usually, you know, we see the market really start to come into into full bloom our spring and summer. So the early middle of March to end of May is usually when the majority of the inventory comes on the market and then people have plenty to pick from over the summer and we kind of start to, to tail off come August. Well, this year, you know, we got shut down in mm-hmm. the middle of March. <laughs> so that inventory, what happened is there was a pause. There was a pause from sellers because they didn't want people in their houses you know, everybody was a little bit in shock. Like it kind of all happened overnight for us. And it was right when we were ramping up. So what happened is that pause has caused even less inventory in the market. But because real estate is, you know, always fueling the economy, the rates keep dropping. So they're trying to encourage buyers to get out there and buy, keep keep industry going, keep it moving. And so buyers are moving. Like there are people that are concerned about jobs. There are people that backed out of some contracts. You know, that part of the market has slowed down. But there's so much demand to buy right now, and there's just so little inventory Hmm. that here's the asterisk on it. It's a good time to buy. It's a good time to buy if you're financially stable and you're ready to to really go after it because, you know, we are seeing houses that are getting – we had one, you know, this week that 35 offers on it. Wow. You know, they're going $45,000, $50,000 over asking price on a $275,000 house. Now, that's not every single one of them, but that's a lot. So you really need to be with an experienced agent that can get you through, you know, a war, because it's going to be a war to go buy a house. Well, it's going to be a war, and it sounds like, man, it is a great time to sell, if nothing else. So flip side, it's time to bring on the inventory, because everybody paused for a minute, but now we're going to see it all start to flood back. We're expecting like that three-month uh, you pause, that three month pushback. So we're really feeling it. It's a slingshot effect right now. People are ready to buy houses, and the sellers that were on the fence are starting to call, but we need them to call faster because we need more inventory for these buyers out there. All right. So if you're listening and you're thinking about putting your home on the market, here we have uh, Missouri's first certified uh, divorce real estate specialist. She's telling you now is the time to sell. So, Kathy Helbig of Experience Realty Partners, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio, 90.7 KWMU.
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com.